any moment of the day in any in any time zone someone is speaking and someone is thinking and someone is working on the SK project so we'll now go to Canada uh, where, where the day is starting um, uh, to Professor Christine Speckens who's affiliated to the Royal College uh, Military College of Canada to the Department of Physics and Space Science she's a practicing radio astronomer but she's also Canada's science director for the SKA project uh, and making Canada, of course, an historic and very important partner for the project. So Professor Speckens will speak to us on the role of the SKA uh, in advancing sustainability and inclusivity within Canadian astronomy. So Professor Speckens, over to you. Okay, great. Um, so as Dan mentioned, I'm an astronomer at universities in Canada. I'm also the Canadian SKA Science Director, and I also chair the Equity and Inclusivity Committee for the Canadian Astronomical Society. And it's from this perspective that I'm going to talk to you today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Canadian astronomical community. I'll tell you about the square kilometer array and equity, diversity, and inclusivity issues through the lens of the Canadian Long Range Plan for Astronomy. And then I'll tell you how how those two initiatives, the SKA and EDI, might come together in Canada in the context of a regional data center that we hope to build. So let's start with Canadian professional astronomy. Astronomy is among the most high impact scientific research fields in Canada. There are about 500 professional astronomers in Canada divided between faculty, uh, researchers, and uh, graduate students and postdoctoral fellows. They're located at universities, institutes, and in government. Um, and there are lots of organizations in Canada that support professional astronomers. Uh, chief among them is the Canadian Astronomical Society. So this is the organization of professional astronomers that promotes the advancement of knowledge in the universe through research, education, and outreach. Um, Canadian astronomers are also supported by uh, government labs that are run mainly through the National Research Council. So NRC maintains Canada's largest observatories and it also represents Canada in leading astronomy initiatives, including the Square Kilometre Array. So you can get a snapshot of the Canadian professional astronomy community on this slide in the background. This is our group photo from the latest um, uh, annual general meeting of the Canadian Astronomical Society. And I can take a step back here for a minute and talk about astronomy in North America. So there are a number of parallels between the Canadian and American astronomical societies. In terms of size, Canada, the Canadian Astronomical Society is about a factor of 10 smaller. There are lots of parallels between our communities and we work closely together, but there are also some differences and government engagement in the SKA project is one of them. Every decade, the Canadian community, led by the Canadian Astronomical Society, prioritizes its initiatives in astronomy for the coming decade. It's called the Canadian Long Range Plan. And Canadians are in the middle right now of developing our plan for the next decade. Um, and so the, the process is, as I said, the, the Long Range Plan, or LRP. And on the bottom right-hand corner of this slide, you see the covers for our previous two LRPs in 2000 and 2010. LRP 2020, as before, will review the field of Canadian astronomy along with associated education, outreach, development, and inclusion goals. So not only the, the business of astronomy and research in astronomy, but also its impact as well as astronomy and society. And the goal of the long range plan effort is to serve as a single unified vision for the highest priority projects in Canada for the next decade. Now LRP 2020, as I mentioned, is underway now. There are an initial set of recommendations for large facilities that have been published and the full report should be released in November. And if you're interested in checking it out, you can see the website on the bottom of this slide. Canada has long been an important player in the SKA project, and um, we have uh, had scientific and technological leader, leadership positions, and it is a top priority for the Canadian astronomical community. So scientifically, Canadians carry out world-leading research that's aligned with many of the high priority science objectives for SKA. And the picture in the bottom on the left hand side of the bottom of this slide shows the wheel of SKA science that Phil showed in his talk earlier. And all Canadians are involved in almost all of those projects and um, are carrying out world leading research in a number of them. Technologically, Canada led the design of the main real-time digital signal processor for SKA-1 bids. So this is the correlator beamformer. And you can think of this thing as a, uh, um, as a, a device that 
pairs together the equivalent of millions of iPhones downloading millions of high resolution videos every second, but it does it at much lower cost and at much lower power. So Canada led the design of this um, component of SKA1 and we're proposing to lead its construction. And in the bottom right hand corner of this slide, you can see the Talon board that was designed um, by NRC in collaboration with our industry partners. Now, as I mentioned, the main facility priorities for the next decade of Canadian astronomy have been released. And just like in previous long range plans, the SKA remains among the top facility priorities for the Canadian community in the coming decade. Also featuring prominently in the long range plan, particularly in this version of the long range plan is the idea of sustainable development. Now it's clear that within the Canadian astronomical community, the professional Canadian astronomical community, research priorities and facility priorities are inextricably linked to sustainable development in terms of infrastructure, education and equality. And so sustainable development is a priority for the Canadian astronomical community. Um, and so what I'm highlighting on this slide are the recommendations recommendations by the community made to the long range plan panel, specifically with respect to equity, diversity and inclusion. And so in the background, yeah, that's what you can see in the background of this slide are all the different recommendations that were made. And they're color coded according to various themes, fostering advocacy, creating opportunities, building partnerships, securing resources and developing policy. And so the broad themes of these recommendations um, resonate with the sustainable development goals of the UN in a variety of ways, but where I think the, the strongest parallels lie are in the goals that are lo located at the bottom right hand side of this, uh, of, of this slide. So the SKA then and sustainable development for the Canadian community are very closely linked. Simply put, Canadian, the Canadian Astronomical Society is not interested in participating in a project that doesn't have sustainable development as one of its goals. And so for Canadians to be participants and leaders in the SKA project, those, that participation needs to advance sustainable development goals both worldwide as well as within Canada. So let me give you a concrete example of how Canadians are thinking about this problem, and I'll put it in the context of a Canadian regional data centre. So we've heard about these data centres before in this session, and the cartoon version of them is illustrated on the right-hand side of this slide. But basically, we need regional data centres and network around the world in order to scientifically exploit the huge volumes of data that the Square Kilometre Array will produce. Um, Canadians are proposing to uh, host a regional data centre. And we've also heard on this uh, during this um, session that regional data centers enhance data access or they, they in, afford data access for a number of researchers. And so for Canadians, this is the case as well. Um, the idea is that a Canadian research center will enable scientific productivity, not only for Canadians, but also for people around the world. But what's emerging as a key concept for the Canadian data center idea is also this idea of scientific accessibility. And that's what's illustrated on the left hand side of this plot. So this is a North American study that was carried carried out um, by looking at the usership and publication rate of NASA observatory science. And so on the vertical axis of this plot, you can see the, the institutions at which the first authors of publications from those data are located. And on the horizontal axis, there are basically two points. The part on the left shows the publications that are produced by observers of those facilities. So those are people that proposed for time, controlled the telescope by virtue of that observing time and wrote a paper about it. And on the right hand side are the archival publications. So people who went to a database, downloaded data that someone else had observed and to carried out their science that, that way. And what this plot nicely illustrates for all of the NASA observatories that are listed here is that the number of institutions at which people carry out archival science is vastly higher, almost a factor of two, than the number of institutions at which people actually observe with the telescope. And not only that, if you break down the data a little bit further, you find that the archival publications come from a larger diversity of institutions in a diversity of countries. So both globally, but also nationally. So the institutions that lead in archival publications tend to be smaller, they tend to be more remote, and they tend to be more diverse. So the bottom line here is that robust telescope archives not only foster scientific productivity in the way that we traditionally think about it, but they also foster scientific accessibility. And it's this accessibility that Canadians are hoping to harness in hosting a regional data center, both in terms of sustainable development around the world, but also in terms of sustainability to address um, 
inequities within the Canadian society. So my summary is as follows. Scientific and technological leadership in the SKA is a top priority for the Canadian astronomical community. And at the same time, astronomical research priorities are inextricably linked to sustainable development in infrastructure and education and equality. And that's a demand of the Canadian research community. And we think that we can fulfill that demand through a Canadian regional data center. It will be the hub of Canadian SKA digital activity. It would foster scientific productivity, but it would also foster scientific accessibility. And I'll stop there. Thanks.